And now as promised on the Ron Johnson show, I'm going to bring in Kendall Shell, former Gophers Hooper from 2011 to 2015. Played with some pretty good players, Trevor Mbakwe, Damian Johnson. You look at the Tubby Smith era. But the one thing about Kendall is he also is around women's basketball. Really good friends with Rachel Bannum, trains with uh, Paige Beckers. So he's on both sides of the spectrum, which is kind of cool because we get so lost in the sauce with men's basketball. But I'm going to jump out there early, Kendall. Right off the bat, big time pickup for Ben Johnson. Dawson Garcia, four star, top, you know, one of the top players in the state of Minnesota when he came out, 6'11, swing, can shoot, can get aggressive when he needs to. Uh, I think he's getting, as he got, has gotten older, he's going to have that dog in him now, realizing that I can impose my will in games. He'll have Jamison Battle to help him. How huge was that to sign Dawson Garcia back to Minnesota? I think it was huge. I mean, he's somebody who, like you said, um, and like we've seen around first McDonald's all America, you know, since Chris Humphreys, right? So just those accolades alone, you know, show what he is as a player to even be, you know, mentioned in that category is huge. Uh, and to even, you know, be able to walk around like that with that confidence, you know, is huge, right? But also, and what I've talked a lot about is like, you know, I don't want too much pressure put on him as well, right? Because it's gonna take a collective effort. It's really gonna take a collective effort um, of guys, right? There won't just be one program changer. Um, it's going to be a collective effort, but Dawson being someone who's so highly ranked and so highly touted, you know, that's something that I would say the Minnesota fans have been complaining about um, the last few years is getting that top in-state talent. And I think that checks that box. But then also, you know, naturally when you do see a guy at that caliber come from home, you know, it's huge for that in-state recruiting. Right, like you need to see guys that you could see yourself being um, get there. Right, you know, a lot of times we think that when a guy that's seen as a McDonald's All American, whether it's a Chet Holmgren, whether it's a Jalen Suggs, whether it's a Tyus Jones, it's almost like the Gophers aren't in the conversation. Right. Well, I think this at least moves the needle to make sure we are in the conversation because I think a lot of people know the in-state talent and the high school talent in Minnesota now and coming up is is phenomenal. Like it's really phenomenal how much is coming. And so just Ben being able to show everyone that, yeah, I do have those relationships. I can make it happen. It's a lot. It's great. Um, and it's good for recruiting. Uh, from a basketball standpoint, like Dawson's a dog, no pun intended. Like he can hoop, he can go. Like you say, you know, I've been in gym with Dawson a lot um, and he's got game. I think if you bring all of his game together, right, in the right way and make sure he maximizes where he can be, you know, oof. I think the sky's the limit for him, for sure. I think the sky's the limit for the team in general if he can maximize his potential, right? I think I think that's huge. So I think it's a huge get all around from a recruiting standpoint, from a basketball standpoint. And lastly, the most important thing for him himself, you know, obviously we know like he wanted to get back home for some other reasons before and like being able to play back home and just do that and you know, that's the good thing about what's going on with the transfer thing. It's like that freedom that I think it shouldn't be a problem. I know there's other conversations about the transfer portal, but I'm just happy that the kid can come home. He can be comfortable and he can play uh, for his state. Yeah, and you look at Destiny Obert. You know, she's coming back as well. She's transferring from Arkansas yeah. She in 2019. She was one of the biggest recruits as well. So both Lindsay yeah. and Ben had a good week. Uh, the transfer portal can taketh and the transfer portal can giveth. And I think that's right. that's what everybody was saying. You know, everybody was, you know, Lindsey Whalen lost this many recruits. Ben Johnson had, you know, a couple guys, you know, not happy yeah. with the situation and wanting to transfer. But now you added Dawson Garcia, you added Destiny Oberg. How does that help the 2023 class for both of them, women and men? I mean, I think I think it's a lot. I think it's huge. I think for both women and men, um, I think the biggest thing, like for these first couple of years for both Lindsey and Ben is like, the pressure is just, it's its so much, right? It's so high because one Minnesota sports fans, like have been through it, right? Like I always want to start that. I understand that and I acknowledge that. But then also a lot of them can be very naive with things. You know, they can kind of look past a lot of things and they can also can just be, be hard on the coaches and the players and the athletes here. And so for Ben and Lindsay to both walk in as former Gophers, you know, as Minnesotan through and through, like 
it's good for the the promotion but once like it's time to really hoop and to really play like the targets on their back and so like for me that's a lot of the reason like you know i didn't do much you know podcasting even this year about the season right because i knew that there was going to be a lot of pressure on both ben and Lindsay, and i don't want to bring this analysis to something that we really don't know yet like it takes two or three years right to rebuild a program like it takes like developing kids you know that's the that's the only problem that you know i see with a lot of the the college coaching and like the turnover is like you know we want to bring in kids to develop them for four years but you expect guys and uh ladies to really like turn these programs around and three to four years, right? And like, it takes time. It, it takes some transfers out. It takes some failure, you know? Like, there's always a time to get rid of them, but I didn't want to put that unneeded pressure on both Lindsey and Ben. So like, for me and looking at them, it's like over these next two to three years is when we need to start kind of seeing and assessing what they're doing with the program, right? Like how they're performing in the Big Ten is huge. I think that's the most important thing, you know? I think obviously we saw the Gophers uh, men and women could perform, you know, uh, I guess non-conference, right? But when it comes to the Big Ten, I think now that they've got these these good gets and they've got this recruiting that's starting to get the ball rolling, right? They have Amaya Battle coming in next year, who's who's a hooper as well, right? When when Paige was over at Hopkins, I remember, you know, we were going to watch those games and we saw Amaya, I think she was a sophomore at the time, as the point guard. I'm like, yo, like, she's solid. Like, you can see someone who can play, right? And so I think that's a huge get. I think it's dope to have the Jamison battle and Maya battle thing for the Gophers now, both men's and women's. So I just think all of that is big and huge. And um, again, like I said earlier, you know, having these people from Minnesota, I think it, it is important because I do, I do think that they really do take pride. They take pride in what they're doing. Now, I don't want to go out here and be like, yeah, let's get a full Minnesota roster. Like, I don't think that's that's the answer either, right? Like, I don't want to, I don't want to sacrifice just having Minnesotans just so that, you know, we, we don't have the good talent as well. But I think it is important to have some high level Minnesotan players, just because I tell everyone, right, traveling along a lot of places, you know, Minneapolis and Minnesota hoops in general, like, it's probably the hottest, most fast growing basketball space, you know, in the country right over the last 10 years specifically and that's when i've last been here from 2011 uh to 2022 it's like yo from tyus when i first started to rashad boss that was a lot of talent but then we have like the pages and the chats and the Jalens and the zeke Najis. uh now we have trey holloman going next year and then we have a maya battle coming Kendall, you talked about pressure for Lindsey Whalen. You talked about pressure for Ben Johnson. But Lindsey's a star Hall of Famer. Ben Johnson, just another light-skinned Chico DeBarge Hooper on the team. Who's under the most pressure of the two of, of getting wins this season or, you know, turning the program around? Oh, man. I mean, when you think about it, like, Lindsey has her name in the rafters, right? So let, let's be clear. Ben does, ben does have his name in Raptors, so that's a lot. But also, at the end of the day, um, I, maybe I'm biased because I played uh, for the men's basketball program, but I know those fans will be pretty critical, too, you know? So I just feel like it evens out, right? I, th I think at okay. the end of the day, it's about both their pride and passion for the Gophers, and I think they both have that. And I think um, they're going to win at that, and no one's going to question that through that entire time. But also, I think that is why they probably have that much pressure on them because everyone's always preached you need someone that cares about you know this state and has true pride um so the pressure is going to come from that um but you know when it when it comes to just anything i'm sure ben can say it too you know lindsey will is a legend you know from a basketball standpoint you know ben ben did get himself some buckets though like he used to yep. he was one of our coaches right so like there's a few <laughs> coaches that can get out there and hoop with you and he's one of the ones that can get out and hoop with you so you always respect that actually when you're a player.